Good evening, fellow professionals. My name is Quelan Govinda. Um, I am the head of product uh, for a product called My MPS at Halbridge. And today's webinar will be covering what I call the three T's. The key trends impacting allied professionals, the useful tips to rebuild your patient volumes uh, and profitability, and including tools that can help you um, in the new norm through a real life demo of the My MPS system. Looking at um, the, the key trends, um, specifically the claim trends, what we have seen is the average private allied health professionals experience due to COVID. Um, and as you can see in this specific graph, there has been a downturn in terms of financial impact on your practices. Um, you know, most practices will, will have experienced a drop in revenue by, by default, which is significant to their turnover and the financial year end uh, of having a great 2020. This makes it very difficult to cover the costs. Um, and we've seen that trends across the allied professional and all other disciplines within Halbridge. Why did it take so long? Um, key things to note uh, in terms of why it took so long was it was difficult for medical professionals um, booking appointments um, and getting hold um, of, of patients. Um, there were pure pure, pure uh, poor communication on safety protocols and whether or not to open for the business. Um, there was also the lack of practices um, being stuck with the, the, the manual paper files. Um, practices really locked to the, the, the paper practice um, and not really embracing the digital practice. Um, and also practices weren't set up for, for the new word within the industry called telehealth or telemedicine um, and really enabled for, for virtual consults. So given that financial impact, given those trends and drop in patient volumes, this is, this is why it took so long for, for, for practices to, to recover post COVID. Um, looking at another trend, uh, virtual consults. So this was another trend that we picked up during, during COVID and, and coming out of COVID now in September and October, um, we just looked at a period between Feb and March um, and then obviously between April and August when we had different lockdown levels, thanks to our, our president. In the midst of this telehealth consults um, from the practices that adopted became a safe way for, for practices to see patients. Um, this graph clearly illustrates um, the adoption of telehealth at these practices and the upward curve during the time that COVID was upon us in the different phases. What we do see um, is that you know, these practices specifically market their telehealth um, feature set um, and also to a, a wide variety of patient demographics. You know, your elderly, uh, patients with chronic diseases, patients who are busy uh, that live really far from, from, from practices, um, really preventing these, these patients from, from coming in, protecting them, using the virtual consult as a platform to see them. Um, and another key thing that came out from these practices was, you know, using this virtual consult for specific or suitable consultations. Um, you know, for example, uh, some of the, some of the feedback that we got was, you know, communicating for, for your test results, whether it was an X-ray or uh, some of the GP practices, they use it for repeat scripts. Um, and some of the psychology practices that really used it for, um, you know, depression uh, and anxiety and just checking up with your patients. Okay, to the second T of, of the agenda, really looking at four key tips to rebuilding patient volumes. Um, tip number one, proactively reaching out to patients. So this, based on the data, based on how practices had engaged pre and post COVID, um, patients like customers of any business want to feel like they matter, um, and especially personalizing these, these gestures, informing them of what's happening at your practice we found that a lot of practices that engage and proactively um, communicated with patients um, was positively impacted both from a financial perspective as well as a brand as a practice. Um, you know, it's a perfect time to reach out to patients and tell them it's safe if you're implementing telehealth, um, you know, through, through a variety of options such as automating SMSs. A simple one would be, you know, it's a birthday. We all are still human. Um, you have to engage with your patients, a reminder of your birthday and just check in with those patients always do matter. Another example would be chronic patient follow-ups to remind them to come in and make sure they stick on their, on, on, on their plan 
or if they're you know out of hospital and you you really want to engage them on their plan or fitness plan to get them back to recovery these are some of the automated messages that we've seen that come through um another way of 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 actively reaching out to patients was sending out bulk communications for for updates such as COVID 19 maybe your practices are opening and closing times how you're adopting how your protocols um, and we've seen that tip really um, being used by by some of the practices out in the industry um, another one uh, another use case could be to update your online platforms so really make yourself relevant make yourself found on google um, we have different you know um, platforms that you know we register through through google platform or through our recommit in terms of you know being registered or through med pages these are options as a practice that uh, we've seen practices use and, and generate foot traffic at, at their practices um, next one is you know building on on, on getting your practice online um, I, I mentioned med pages uh, med pages the largest most up-to-date complete healthcare database in, in africa so really registering yourself with med pages allow visitors to you know really search you find your contact details and and quickly and access um, you know where you are and basically can generate foot traffic towards your practice another one was google my business um, you know most consumers such as patients start searching health services on google it's it, it is um, a, a culture and part of that is google my business it's not exclusive to a health portal but it does offer you know patients access to you know more search results and by you being listed to google my business that's free you get better access to to new patients uh, another element is social media um, for many patients what we've seen uh, practices adopting the social media getting on there uh, making their presence known building a brand in an, and you know social media is an expensive way of generating you know mouth uh, word of mouth referrals patient reviews you know, communicating about practice information it's really a good way to to go through the facebook twitter instagram and linkedin um, and the last one is recommit so recommit is the south africa's fastest growing online health booking platform um, it enables patients to make appointments at your practice 24 7 at a time that suits them which is key especially if you are at, at home at 7 p.m and your practice is closed you know patients can still access your your calendar and make appointment bookings um, for your receptionist or yourself to really confirm the next day or the days after so it really does help giving access and making patients find you a lot better okay third tip is embracing telehealth um, you've seen the virtual consult i showed you that graph before about the upward trend if it's adopted and implemented correctly um, and for the right type of, of consultation types um, it, it does open up practices to a whole new market of patients um, it does reduce no-shows because of the follow-ups you do get paid for it um, based on the schemes so it's a good way to both get paid as well as engage your practices at a click of a button which i'll show you in the demo um, it does give you a competitive edge in terms of building your practice brand and your your patient your patient culture and it retains your current patients that you are trying to get in but they are worried about covid and how, how it's how it's safe the last tip is you know we talk about optimizing cloud-based solutions um, the key thing is access, access, access. You need to be able to be accessing your practice from a business perspective as well as your patient's perspective to serve your practice. And being on cloud gives you that gives you that access. Um, you can access to your practice. You're not tied down to that that patient file. You're closer to the financial transactions of how your business is performing, and ultimately you're improving the better patient care through um, accessing your patient notes um, and any of the the automated um security and automated updates that you get as being part of cloud so that's that's tip number four okay now that we've discussed some of those great tips you know there have been some pain points um during covid such as poor patient volumes profitability of practices which i mentioned earlier um you know some useful tips of how to navigate and overcome these barriers which i showed in those four tips but you know more importantly you know how how does helpbridge and specifically the my nps solution really help na uh, navigate through what i call the new norm and how these practices have engaged with these features and tools to really help them uh, set up their practices to be digital some of the scenarios that we're going to discuss 
is about patient communication, which was key for driving patient volumes. Um, you know, a couple of filters about, you know, repeat, um, how can I say ICD-10 filters, um, follow-ups. That's, that's really what we're going to discuss in this demo. Uh, telehealth, showing you um, telehealth, how easy it is on the MyMPS system, but um, very simple for your practice and for, for patients to adopt and use. Um, so the key is implementation and simplicity. And then the last piece to, to that is really, you know, moving away from the patient file, moving towards the cloud. How can you have access to your patient as well as your business um, through, through what I'm going to show you. Okay. Looking at my MPS um, with clinical notes uh, and how it works in your practice, there, there's some key elements that I'll touch in the demo. One is we'll be walking through how to schedule and book an appointment, check some benefits, see if your patients are covered for those type of uh, procedures or consultation. Um, we talk about um, a waiting room and how your practice admin or your receptionist or yourself checking patients so you can manage your, your waiting room. Um, access to, to patient files, uh, we'll cover that. We'll also cover how to bill, capture, capture consults, um, capture quick notes, um, and also generate a, a bill and, uh, and, and an invoice. Um, we'll look at customizing uh, billing templates um, that will really make your, your billing life a lot easier. Um, and we'll also look at um, reports uh, to really end off what you would see in a typical day um, in a practice. Cool, so logging in, uh, you each get your own username and password. From a security perspective, we know um, who has access to your practice um, and who doesn't. So this is Username and password. Just going to log in here. For the purposes of the demo, uh, I've set this practice up. It is uh, fictitious data, um, but it's hopefully enough for, for us to get through all those scenarios. So navigating through uh, MPS, what you do see is you have your calendar. It's really the heart of, of the system. Everything gets driven from here, both from your patients, as well as your waiting room and access to the patient file. You have an inbox, which really is your daily to-do list of, of items, whether you have invoices that you have saved that you need to come back to and perfect before you submit it to avoid any, any rejections. Um, you've got claims. Basically, if you do submit to the medical aid and you do need to ref, um, fix or resubmit items, um, it really manages your workflow. Um, and if there's any outstanding balances from, from what you've submitted, really emailing and communicating out to those patients um, the reconciliation happens automatically. Um, and if there's anything that doesn't reconcile to that patient or that account, there, there is the option to, to match those, those ERAs that we receive from the scheme. So that's, that's the inbox. The accounts, um, here you can add new accounts um, and we'll, we'll do that for the purposes of the demo um, a little bit later. Um, and you can view any invoices that you, that you have done um, today um, or, or a, a different date range. Uh, you can suspend different accounts um, should you choose to and really look at your suspense accounts. Um, so that's the accounts and just really adding new, new accounts to this system. The admin is, is looking at your practice details, your providers, as well as your users on the system. Um, apologies, this is my demo. There we go. I think I had a bit of a network flip there. Yeah, so, so looking at uh, your, 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 admin, your admin tab, it really helps you understand your practice details, your address, basic banking details. If you have any specialized network rates, do you have any private rates that you've set up um, specifically with schemes for specific procedure code that you charge privately and more than, more than those rates? and any specific settings that you would like at a practice um, to, really, to really help your, your practice and your processes. You have providers, a list of providers that are listed in this practice um, and their roles. So these are treatings and you get assistings uh, for, for simplicity and the different users that have access to your practice based on you providing them details. Um, and these users have different um, access rights from capturer to financial administrator to practice admin, owner, reception, system admin. So really customizing the specific user, what they have access to and how they can navigate 
the system according to their user profile. Okay, the last part is, is the reports. So in the reports piece, basically summarize your, your, your practice, summarizes your practice from a you know, appointment, from a financial perspective of claims being submitted, monthly transaction reports, payments being made, age analysis of outstanding accounts, um, anything that you've specifically written off during a period um, to operationally, which is day-to-day -day, uh, SMSs that you've sent or any incomplete contact details that you have on the accounts that you would like to improve on. Okay, so we'll, we will come back to the report at the end, at the end of the demo. So to start the demo, what you can see this practice um, in the calendar has, has a few uh, appointments booked in for today, different patients um, that this practice is, is seeing. Um, and he has basically three, three patients in the waiting room. Um, apologies, I am looking to the right, I have a missed screen, so I'm presenting from there. Um, so looking at, at firstly, how to book an appointment, we're basically going to do this. I have created a demo patient. So this is patient name is Halbridge, surname is demo. Um, medical aid patient, we'd like to see, for example, today, we'd like to see the physiotherapist and we're going to do a video consult. Um, and the reason why this patient is coming in is for rehabilitation or, or you, if you don't, you don't know why, or the patient has it given to you, you can put other, and you can say private, for example. Um, but for today, this person's coming for rehabilitation. I'm going to save here. Um, but before I save part of booking an appointment within our system, you have access to what we call benefit check. Um, and this basically checks for this physio, for this 72501 common code, this diagnoses the amount for this scheme, which is a discovery classic saver, and you'll be checking up on this appointment and whether this client has, has benefits or not. Um, and this will basically give you the ability to see different colors. Um, let me just enable for my, for my viewing the physiotherapist, and I should be able to see the one that I just booked now, correct. Okay, so um, here's Mr. Halpridge demo, the different colors, the red, the orange, um, we'll, we'll touch on that. So this basically indicates if the client has benefits or not, red meaning no benefits, orange meaning partial benefits. Um, we do have a little in-app um, tool here that you can really chat and just get some help on. So I'm going to type in benefit check. And there should be some options that, that it gets drives. So here, how to conduct a benefit check. Um, what do the colors mean? So green means fully covered, yellow means partially covered, orange means not covered, and red means rejected. You will have grays that are rating response depending on those schemes and blues tell you that, that there were no benefit checks triggered or not enough information or could be a cash account okay so that's that's just really navigating um the colors so i'm going to check in mr Halpridge allied demo i've moved this to the top it was four hours ago because i booked it for 10 a.m and in this demo you'll see there's a little uh, icon on the left here a little play button and that is, it's, it's, the system is warning you that this is a telehealth or video consult. How do I access telehealth? Um, being a provider, I click on this button. This button goes green if my patient is waiting for me. Um, so if I'm navigating through my waiting room and I can see this one going green, it means the patient is there. Right now it's black, so there is no patient waiting on the other side. Um, the key thing for, for telehealth for patients is once I've made the booking, like I did at 10 o'clock, the patients would be reminded by SMS and email about their appointment, a little protocol of what they need to follow. And they, all they have to do is click on a link and they will get access to what you're going to see right now. I'm going to click on here. This is telehealth. Um, this is Halbridge demo. Um, it has a camera, it can mute. 
I'm going to join the room. Perfect. So on the screen, basically, if the patient was on the other side, I'm obviously waiting for the patient. This is me on the left hand side and this way is where the patient would be. I can leave the message for the patient saying, I help bridge demo waiting your appointment. Um, I can share my screen if I have some test results or x-rays like we've seen providers use, really show clients based on that appointment. I'm not going to do that now. I'm just going to leave here. Close that. Get back to, back to the waiting room. Okay, so that is how easy telehealth is um, within the system. It's really a click of the button. Um, the system does remember the provider. So for me, I'm Mr. Demo Allied or Allied Allied Admin, and it'll always remember me as a provider. Um, so I don't have to type in my name. It's already pre pre remembered. Okay, accessing the file. So before this, um, so I will I will look at Mr. Halbridge demo. I want to look at their clinical notes. In here is what we see on Mr. Patient. Uh, we're seeing that he's 39 years old, female, great, general medical history. Um, patient suffers from hypertension. Uh, patient was driving on the highway when she saw a dog thrown uh, from a moving vehicle. Uh, so current history. Uh, dog bite, uh, when the patient halt, height, weight, BMI, um, and anything additional to say um, allergies, um, cats, for example. Last time it was edited was on the 10th uh, or 9th, 9th of October. Okay, so that's general medical history. We also have work and hobbies. So this patient um, is a medical researcher and loves to do sewing, cooking, and nature with dogs. Okay, hence why her stopping and trying to help help the dog. Okay, general progress notes. So here we've seen um, patients really, uh, or providers really use it for quick notes or quick updates. It does give you a progress of different consults or quick progress check-ins that you've been doing with your patient. Uh, you know, type in the date and you just type in some quick notes for this, um, some ROM assessments, for example, continue with treatment, some basic movement and tests over the course. So it really gives you that option. Um, you can clear, you can reset it. So if I want to join something else, uh, this one's right shoulder and, and I can clear that or reset from the beginning. Okay, another cool feature we have is the, the email. So you're gonna email this, this file or this progress chart to your client, you can. You can also attach, let's just say a follow up plan or a, um, a program or a fitness plan or a, a, a document that you have from the schemes or whatever the one that you've designed for, for his exercise program. Um, another, another what, what, what would the client see on their side? So if you had to email them, they would get this plus any other attachment um, so here's the general progress, the name, obviously your practice details on top, the general progress, the list of items that you've done within this time range. Okay. So that is the, the print function. I'm going to save and close this note. That's the general progress note. And what we have here is a, I, I call it the formal clinical note, so the formal consult. We've, we've seen this patient for five or six times. They've come in quite a lot for their hand evaluation. I have the status of some of these notes that I've made. I've got five in complete and two in, in a draft state. Um, and when I'm in draft, we can just quickly open one. You can see I last edited this uh, the 9th of October. Um, and basically it was to, regarding the hand evaluation I made this note a while back, but obviously I wasn't happy with it. Now that I'm happy with it, I'm going to save and lock this note. Um, happy. This note is uneditable. No one else can edit this because it's a save, save note. Why it's saved? Because we see medical legal practices. Um, really clients coming and looking back um, 
be reflecting on this now. So one will tell you who completed this now in what time, and no one else can go and edit this, edit this note. What does this look like? Again, we can print this specific console for that day. Um, it gives you the overall general progress of a running history, plus the specific date on the 9th, where we spoke about the different elements. We, we follow the, the SOAP methodology for our clinical notes. So, you know, subjective, objective assessment and plan. And within those sections, you know, we've given the ability for, for providers to really complete their notes, whether it's short notes or long detail notes like this specific one about that encounter. Um, but this is the print option. A couple of cool tricks that we've also added, uh, what we've seen in the allied world, when you go to hospitals and you're seeing patients for follow-ups, um, we've created this copy and create, and this copy create basically created the one from the 9th of the 10th, made it for today, which is the 20th. Um, and what we've seen is everything that I've typed out initially is still here. And the only thing that I want to add is great webinar, session and progress and happy with this um little spell check here for your notes and you are on your way so i'm going to save this one for the 20th we'll move over to billing if you're happy with this so save and lock now that I'm happy with this note, I can capture an invoice, which really talks about finishing finishing that consult. So the system does warn me that it's a duplicate. That means I've done this before, uh, but I'm still going to do it in, in any case for the purposes of the demo. So this is Mr. Halpridge demo, came to see the physio on the 20th. If there were previous appointments, it would tell you as well um, that you want to link this invoice to to really help from your collections as well as your, your calendar of outstanding items that you've done for this specific concept. Um, for the purposes of billing templates, I mentioned it in, in, in the circle, um, in the circle flow diagram, but what, what I have created is a billing template. And what is a billing template? Basically, it's the favorite that I like to use, for example, for a first appointment sinus. So here I've created this favorite. It has a list of diagnosis codes. Um, for, for, for this one, it's just one, a list of procedures, my favorites, uh, the quantities and the price based on the Discovery Classic Saver. Um, in order for me to create a new one, it's really easy. I will reset this and we will generate a new one. And what I'd like to say is, for example, we could choose to put in a C two three oh one doing this for the physio, and I'd like to save this because I use this one specifically all the time for, for rehab. Um, I'm going to save this one for rehab. And I might have a few diagnosis codes for this one. Just for the purposes of the demo, you can type in a specific diagnosis code um, according to your discipline. Save the save the codes. You can add more codes here to do it, and we will save. We'll save this, um, and what you will see, the system would refresh, and you would get rehab one. What that would look like if we were to reset the billing and click on rehab one fills in exactly what we asked, asked it based on my favorite. Um, in ending it, looking at practices and depending on the busyness, if you're still not comfortable with this claim or your practice process that you have a, a billing or a practice manager that submits your claims or you go back at night, we'll save this for later and that will go towards your, you check this patient out. It does warn you that you have an invoice. Remember, because we saved it for later. I don't want to do that now. It reminds you there is an outstanding balance for this. I don't want to collect this now. And I will move to the next patient, which is Robert. And so that process begins. Okay. Where did that save for later go? Um, um, it actually went to this little inbox. 
we I spoke about it initially, where we call it the, the task management. I saved it for later. And if I look at today, 20th Helpbridge demo, it's the patient. This is what we looked at. I'm happy with this invoice. I haven't made any changes to it. Oh, I, I don't like this specific code on here. I didn't do that. We'll submit this. And basically that updates to say, I've submitted this claim. Here's the list of information and we're waiting a response from the Mediplayers. Okay. So now that I've showed you the calendar, how to book, how to check in, how to do telehealth, um, how to view a patient file, um, view their, their history, look at their progress, add a clinical note, copy and create new notes, send an invoice, um, capture an invoice for later, create a billing template. Um, that kind of gives you a holistic view of a typical day with their patient. Um, and as you can see, we have invoiced this patient because I've submitted a claim, so the system prompts you that you've invoiced and that your clinical notes are up to date. The last piece of, of this is because this practice hasn't enabled SMS reminders, I'm just gonna show you a little setting for confirmation reminders. Um, it has been set up for reminders, but we are confirming it will be sent out to clients. Here you can edit that reminder that gets sent out. Um, this is a little template. This is what basically it'll cover. Dear Jonathan, this is a reminder giving you the details. And if you have any questions, kind regards, you can you can add a lot more um, details. So I just added a practice email and the doctor's initial. So here it'll say Dr. S. Ellis, and here is the email address for, for S. Ellis, as an example. Okay, so this is really communicating with your patients. Uh, reminding them about the appointments and also confirmations, plus you can customize that message. Okay, I'm just going to close that. Um, last piece on communication is bulk communications. Um, I'm, this is the communication center, uh, and basically this allows you to search for patients within a specific time range, specific age, gender, if it's medical aid, um, I'm looking for discovery and I'm looking for J01 and four. I think that's the one that we did. I have one patient. Yes, Mr. Holpage demo and one cell phone number. Great. So it's picked up that. And I'd like to tell, tell that patient looking, you know, actually, please put in your. We have session collapse. What does that look like? Dear Christopher, please book in your rehab session follow-ups kind of guides. And that gets triggered when you hit send email. You can also attach multiple documents um, to this, pictures, videos, um, to the specific email that gets sent to Christopher that was picked up by this patient card. You can also SMS. Um, that patient based on your filter criteria, this allows you to better manage your patients and really target and segment um, this particular patients or populations, uh, sample populations within your, your greater practice. Okay, last piece is the reports. Um, I'll just generate a report from today, a quick little PDF about the appointment report. This shows me my list of providers, as you can see, I've got occupational therapists. Uh, that's so I've got five physios, five were medical aids, um, four were existing patients, and one was a new patient. I'm just going to hobble down to that physiotherapist. And in here, we should see Mr. Halpridge demo, um, discovery not yet covered. And this is what we invoiced based on what we submitted. Just a quick little summary of what we did today. Um, that's the report. There are different types, PDF or Excel. If you want more fancy, you can take the Excel and customize it how you'd like. Um, we've also got the BI dashboard. This is advanced reporting um, add-on feature to the My MPS system. And that just gives business or practice owners a glimpse into their financials uh, over a period of time, um, as well as the operational and clinical information. So 
I'll just show you a quick one on financial dashboard. This basically looks at um, a custom date range. So it allows you, tells you your practice name, uh, which provider, if you want to see all providers or a specific provider, how they perform during a specific time range um, from a date of service, as well as what you've been invoiced. This gives you holistically how much you've invoiced, how much medical aid has paid, what has the patient paid you've collected from, what's outstanding from, from medical, aid, medical aid, example, um, key care, for example, or discovery, on my top schemes that I've invoiced based on my patient demographics and what's outstanding from a liable perspective. This also gives you a good picture about the payment types. Most of this practice is, is predominantly being paid via medical aid. There is manual medical aid, excuse me, payments, and there are some cash elements that, that we're also collecting. We do have a, a trending view that shows you how this practice has performed over the six months period. You can see COVID hit this practice quite hard and the slow road to recovery using some of these tools um, and then back down again. So you can see this practice has been through this turbulent of, of COVID. Top schemes, as I mentioned, Discovery Key Care, the Discovery Prime Cure, Bank Med, and GEMS, uh, and the different outstanding amounts. You can see quite a lot of outstanding amount here in, in medical aid for October, and gives me Discovery Key Care and Discovery as my, as my big drivers of outstanding amount that needs to be paid. There are some patient liable amounts as well, um, for predominantly for, for these schemes that we're waiting results from. So that's just the financial dashboard. There are others, um, for example, a clinical dashboard, which our GPs tend to, tend to use quite predominantly in terms of what they've diagnosed, the top diagnosis, the top procedures. You can see PPE coming into the mix thanks to COVID. Uh, and, and from a consumables, what, what they're using. So really from a clinical perspective. And um, yeah, I hope hopefully today you, you got a glimpse at um, what, what the system can do. Um, how, do you, how do you run your practice and using some of those tools such as telehealth, health communication, um, quick little billing, billing tools um, to really build an invoice as well as communicate with your patients through reminders to bar. Thank you for your time and uh, looking forward to the next webinar. Cheers for now.